in this video, I'm going to talk about absolutely everything there is to know about basketball agents. My name is Brad Canis, and I'm a former professional basketball player that has played on five of the seven world's continents. Now I run a basketball academy that helps players like you get opportunities overseas. I've signed over 200 players on teams throughout the world. And now I'm going to give you guys information about how to make your transition overseas. We're going to talk about what a basketball agent is and what that job entails. The biggest myths of basketball agents, various types of agents. We're also going to cover who is an agent and what steps did they take to get that title. What type of agent is right for you? Do you even need an agent to get an opportunity overseas? Where can you find an agent and how can you tell if they're legit? Is it possible to work with multiple agents? And if so, what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing that? How your agent is gonna get paid. What the process an agent goes through to get you opportunities overseas. American or overseas agent, what's the best option for you? And how you can get an agent to represent you. What steps do you need to take to make you more interesting for an agent? We're gonna cover all this and more. So we're gonna talk about agents, what their job is, and what they're gonna do for you. In your case as a player, your agent's gonna represent you and help you find opportunities overseas. Once they get those opportunities, they're gonna help negotiate contracts to get you the best value. So they're also gonna help you get sponsorship deals. If you're an elite level player and you can get sponsorships in various countries for shoes, clothes, commercials, they're gonna help negotiate those contracts as well. But agents really do a lot more than that. They evaluate you as a player, they know your level, they know where you should be playing, which leagues you should be playing in. All leagues are not the same. Your agent should know about what kind of level you're at and where you should be placed at. Here in Spain, there's, there's eight different divisions. And you might do well on a second division, but not so well on a first division. You might be better off in a third division. Your agent's going to know your level and what level he should be placing you at. Your agent's also gonna negotiate your economic value in that club or in that team that you're gonna be signing with. They're gonna know about what that team's able to pay, what you should be paying. They should know your level and your future potential as well. An agent's responsibility is not always to get you the most money, it's to put you in the best situation where you can grow and you can improve as a player. So in your future, you can make the most money possible. So let's talk about the biggest myths surrounding agents. You need a FIBA license to be a legitimate agent. That's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of agents that work without a FIBA license. Maybe they're partnered with another agent that has a FIBA license. Maybe they're partnered with an attorney. Maybe they're an NBA license agent. Maybe they don't have any licensing, but they have all the contacts. We're gonna talk more about that in the detail because the ones that don't have that FIBA license could potentially be dangerous for your career. Myth number two, a FIBA license means that you have experience and contacts. That's not the case at all. There's so many FIBA agents out there that have no idea what they're doing, that have never been overseas, that have never worked with professional teams or players before. They're just getting started. Just because somebody has a FIBA license does not make them a legitimate agent. It just means that they can take a test and pay a fee. The third myth is that some agents charge fees up front. That's never the case. Any good agent is not going to charge you a fee up front. Be very careful of these type of agents. The fourth myth we're going to talk about is that you need an agent to get an opportunity overseas. That's not always the case. I know hundreds of players that have got opportunities overseas on their own talking with players, talking with coaches, having a contact. So it's not necessarily the case that you need an agent to get an opportunity. We'll talk more about that. Myth number five, when you sign with an agent or an agency, you're set, you got a team. Not the case at all. You sign with an agent, that person agrees to help you find opportunities. That doesn't mean that you're gonna get an opportunity. That just means they're gonna help you search for opportunities. And once you get an opportunity, if you get an opportunity, they're gonna help negotiate that opportunity. The sixth myth 
is that when your agent, if you're signed with an agent, comes and asks you if you will accept a certain offer that they've heard about, that that's not necessarily the offer that you've been given. That that's something they're trying to evaluate if you would accept it or not. If you accept that offer, then they'll go back in and tell that team and inform that team that you're interested. He'll offer your information to that team and then that team will make a decision whether they're gonna sign you or offer you or not. The seventh myth we're gonna talk about is that agents make a lot of money. That's usually not the case. Most agents don't make a lot of money. There's even a lot of agents that lose money and lose a lot of time doing this. And there's a lot of people that want to be agents, they get into it and then they realize that they're just not making money doing it. So they get out of it. The eighth myth we're going to talk about is that being an agent is easy. It's not easy. It's very time consuming. You have to be really good about making contacts, keeping those contacts. You have to know different markets, different leagues. You have to work in different time zones. You have to have a lot of contacts and you have to be able to organize those contacts. You have to follow leagues. You have to follow different countries. You have to follow rules and regulations and changes and modifications and players signing. There's a lot of work that goes into, well, into being an agent. And myth number nine, the last one, is that, man, my agent didn't give me a job, so he sucks. That's not usually the case. Sometimes that's the case. But a lot of times you just don't have the information. You don't have the video. You don't have the stats. You don't have the experience for an agent to get you an opportunity. And maybe that agent thought that maybe he could get you an opportunity, but he tried and he couldn't. Maybe he offered you to hundreds of teams or a thousand teams, who knows? But he wasn't able to get you interest from a team or an offer. So it's not always his responsibility, it's yours as well, to get good stats, to get good film, to make sure they're recent stats and recent film so that he can sell you the best way possible. Let's talk about who is considered an agent or what types of agents there are out there. Firstly, there's an MBPA certified agent. This is an agent that took a test issued by the NBA and WNBA. They passed the test and they paid a fee. And in five years, if they don't sign a player to an NBA team or a WNBA team, then they lose their license and they got to start all over again. These are the only agents that can negotiate contracts with NBA teams or WNBA teams. Secondly, we have FIBA certified agents. These are agents that took a test issued by FIBA, whether it's in Geneva or in Miami, they took a test, they paid a fee, and they gotta pay a yearly fee to keep that agent license. These agents can go through the BAT, which is the Basketball Arbitral Tribunal. They can fight for you if, for some reason, you don't have your salary, you didn't get your salary, you're missing payments. These are the ones that can go to court for you and fight for your salaries. The third type of agent is a practicing attorney or a sports lawyer or a sports attorney. These agents got their law degree in their home country and are practicing attorneys. They can legally represent you. If you're a practicing attorney in your home country, you can just contact FIBA and tell them that you're a practicing attorney, prove that, and they're gonna give you a FIBA certification. The fourth type of agent is an uncertified agent. These agents you gotta be careful with because a lot of times they're just trying to get money from you. But there's also lots of them that have a lot of contacts, that know a lot of people, that know the entire market and can get you opportunities. Sometimes they're partnered with FIBA agents, sometimes they're partnered with other agencies. Some of them are former coaches, some of them are former GMs of professional teams. They know the ins and outs of basketball. Some of these agents have deals with other agencies or other agents that do have their certifications and so they can legally represent you. But to be honest, it's not against the law to be the connection between a player and a team. You don't have to necessarily have a certification to do that. But you have to be really careful with these type of agents because there's nothing controlling what's gonna happen to them if they take your money, if they don't represent you well, they can't lose their license, they're not under some type of governing body. So you have to be really careful with these type of agents. Remember what we talked earlier, you should never pay an agent up front for any type of service. There's no reason for it. If you need to pay anything, it might be a visa, but that visa payment is gonna go to an embassy in your home country. It's not gonna go to a team, it's not gonna go to an agent. So if somebody's asking you for money up front, as if it's not for a showcase or a tour or a camp or something like that, they're just trying to take your money. The fifth type of agent is you, yourself. 
you can represent yourself. It's not illegal. It's not uncommon. I know a lot of players. I know hundreds of players have gotten opportunities from representing themselves, talking with a teammate, going and visiting a, a teammate, paying for their own tryout to go to a team, talking with different coaches they know, just networking on social media. It's, it's really powerful. Facebook, Instagram, it's incredible how powerful these networks are, how many people you can reach on. Me, for example, I had an agent in Morocco that was uncertified. He didn't have any type of certification from FIDA, FIBA. He didn't have any type of law degree. He was just a guy that knew a lot of people that understood basketball and that had a lot of contacts. And he negotiated my contracts in Morocco. This is a very important message about agents. Just because you have a FIBA certification or an MBA certification or a law degree does not mean that you have contacts overseas. It does not mean that you know how the markets work. It does not mean that you can evaluate players, know their level, have any knowledge whatsoever about basketball. It just means you can take a test and you can pay a fee. The difficult part about being an agent is making the contacts, is following the markets, is keeping those contacts, is working 24 seven, trying to help players get opportunities on your Saturdays, on your Sundays. So this FIBA certification or this test or this fee that they paid does not guarantee any of that. It doesn't mean that this person has the contacts that's gonna be able to help you. It just means that they can take a test and pay a fee. The biggest difference between a certified agent and an uncertified agent is that a certified agent can lose his license. An uncertified agent, there's no license to lose. So they can kind of do whatever they want. The certified agent has to try and stay in the guidelines or else they're gonna lose their FIBA license, their MBA license. They're gonna have problems with their law degrees. I know just as many shady certified agents as I do shady uncertified agents. I know a lot of uncertified agents that have a lot of contacts. If you guys have any questions about agents, whether they be certified or uncertified, I'd be happy to, to give you my input and my advice on them. Reach out to me, send me an email, shoot me a text, find me on social media. I'd be happy to answer your questions. What will an agent do for you? Let's talk about the length of a contract. There's many different variations of contracts from a one month contract replacing an injury, injured player to a three, four, five year contract. Your agent is gonna help you decide what length of contract works best for you. You might be offered a three year contract. I had a three year contract in Uruguay. You might be offered a two month contract to replace an injured player. Is that in your best interest or not? Your agent's gonna help you decide whether this contract or that length of contract is gonna help you for your future or not. My agent in Uruguay negotiated a three year contract for me where I had three years and my team also helped me to get my citizenship in Uruguay and they paid for all the fees to do that. So without the help of my agent, that wouldn't have been possible. Now I have two nationalities and I can play in Uruguay for as long as I want. If your agent's experienced, he could be your best resource. He can inform you about the market, about the salaries of the players in the league that you're playing in, about how much you should be making the next season. He can also give you information about different issues or problems that could be going on in the team or in the league. He's also going to give you information about the culture that you're going to because chances are you're going to be playing overseas in a new country. He's going to fill you in and how to be respectful in that country. And if he's an agent in the country that you're going to, he's going to be able to help you with translations. Chances are you're going to a new place and there's a good chance that it's going to be a new language. He's going to be able to help you with translations. Your agent's going to be able to help you with improvements, how you can improve to be a better player. Your agent should be following you and watching your progression throughout the season. They also can be a really good motivating factor. They're gonna be at your games watching you, see you after the game and say, hey, good job. And if they have a social following or a social network, they can help promote you. They're gonna post, hey, look, my player scored 30 points in a game and 12 rebounds. They can post your highlights. They can, they can use their network to promote you. Personally, my agents came to almost every single one of my games. If I was in the country where my agents were, they were there. If I had an American agent, then usually he had a partner in the country that I was playing in, and that partner would go to my games and watch me and give information about my performance to my agent in the US. 
They're gonna be watching you, evaluating you, giving you advice and helping you throughout the entire season. BAT, Basketball Arbitral Tribunal. Hopefully you guys don't have to go through this, but a lot of you will. If you play basketball overseas for long enough, you're gonna have some issues with payments, late payments, some type of problems with, with some type of payment. You're gonna see it. Your agent's gonna be able to help you with that. Professional contracts overseas, FIBA contracts should have a BAT clause. This BAT is the judicial branch of basketball. Your agent should make sure that this BAT clause is in your contract and also assist you if you need to exercise it. Your agent's also gonna help you manage issues and problems within your team and the organization. They're gonna check in, make sure you're comfortable, make sure you're eating well. They're gonna make sure you're getting your playing time and that you have a good role in your team. They're gonna mediate between you and the club if there's any type of problem. And the most obvious but not known to everybody is that they're gonna make sure that you're getting paid and paid on time. If there's any problem with payment or any issue with a late, late payment, they're gonna to go to the team and talk to them about it. You're not the one that should be going to the team, it should be them. Your focus is basketball, their focus is the business side of basketball. So if there's any type of issue, let your agent take care of it because that's their job. Your job is to perform on the court, their job is to make sure that you get paid for it. And just to elaborate on that a little bit, it's really important that if you guys have a late payment or you haven't been paid for a month or two, that you continue playing the way you would as if you were getting paid, because that's professionalism. Let your agent take care of it, let the team deal with it. This is a problem that a lot of people are gonna have throughout their, throughout their careers. It's gonna pop up every now and then. Even in the top leagues, this happens overseas. So the NBA is probably the only league that doesn't have any type of issues with payments. So let your agent deal with it. Keep, keep a good attitude. It's not your teammate's fault. It's not your coach's fault. If you want to have a good opportunity the next year, then keep a good reputation there, whether you're getting paid or not. Personally, my agents would take me out to lunch or dinner. We sit down, we talk about basketball, we talk about life, we talk about uh, how I can get better, how I can improve, what other options there are gonna be for my future. They can be your friend as well as your business partner. Probably one of the more important jobs of an agent is to put you in a good situation and to get you out of a bad situation. Throughout the course of your career, you're gonna get in good situations and you're gonna get in bad situations. Whether the bad situation be with a coach that you're not compatible with or a team that's not respectful to you or an environment that's not comfortable for you, you're gonna be in and out of good and bad situations. Your agent is gonna help you regulate which ones you stay in and which ones you get out of. Sometimes that good situation or that bad situation is out of that agent's control but that agent is gonna help you get out of that situation. I had a very good agent and a well-respected agent put me in a bad situation with unknowingly and unwantingly. And then I had another agent get me out of that situation. It is, however, their job to find the good situations and to steer clear of the bad situations. Off-season work. This is probably the most important aspect of professional basketball. Nobody's gonna motivate you. Nobody's gonna train for you. You gotta do it all yourself. Your agent is gonna help put you in a situation where you're getting the best coaching and best training. Contact your agent if you're back home and you don't have a trainer, you don't have a coach, you don't have a place to work out, he can help you. He's got the contacts. A lot of times they'll even pay for it. My American agent, had hooked me up with the Houston Rockets and put me with the NBA and NFL professional trainer in Houston while I was there for the summer. He also flew me to a tryout in Spain. Now you're gonna ask which agent is right for you and how is that agent gonna find you? That really depends on which agent is interested in working for you. If they've already reached out to you and you're already in contact with them, you only have one option, then that's really your best option. Most likely agents are monitoring you through the university program that you're playing in. If you're a player from outside of the US, chances are agents are going to find you through the teams that you're competing with, whether it be uh, already a professional team or a national team. If you're a junior player, somebody that's under 18, then they're gonna be going to national team events. Typically, if you're an American, agents are gonna reach out to you either by social media, through your coach, or visit one of your games or competitions at a university. 
If you're playing overseas or if you're an international player, big tournaments, big events, uh, with a lot of teams and a lot of competition, that's where agents are gonna be found. Agents are gonna contact you through a coach, through a trainer, possibly a teammate. Nowadays, a lot of times agents are contacting you through social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. If you have these accounts and your name is linked to those accounts, then there's a good possibility an agent will contact you through there. I had agents every week contacting me through Facebook when I was a player. I made sure my name on Facebook was my name, Brad Canis, so that people could actually find me. If you have a name like Baller24 or I Dunk On You 36, chances are the agent is not gonna be able to find you if they're looking for you. So make your social media name and picture relevant to you. Do you even need an agent to play overseas? The short answer is no, you do not need an agent to play overseas. If you're playing for NCAA Division I, NCAA Division II, or other high-level competition in the U.S., then an agent is highly recommended. If you're playing for a national team in your home country, if you're playing for one of the top professional teams, maybe their junior, junior competition or their junior teams, then I would also recommend an agent as well, and so would most basketball-minded people. I have come across hundreds of players that represent themselves, that don't have any agent and that don't work with any one agent. These players contact teams directly, they contact coaches, they reach out to their friends and their teammates or former teammates that are playing overseas. They do all the marketing and the networking themselves. And this is the best option if you don't have an agent representing you. First of all, reach out to some agents and agencies. Send your profile, which means your video, your game film, your stats, all the information you possibly can. Get that to an agent with a nice letter that says, hello, I am. Introduce yourself, explain that you're looking for an agent and you'd like to be represented and then send them all that information and see if you get a response. Send it to hundreds of agents. See if you get a response. If you don't, then that means your information is not interesting enough for them. You have to go to an agency showcase or you have to come overseas to try and find your own opportunity. How can you find an opportunity overseas without having an agent? Number one most important is make contacts and network. This is crucial to absolutely any business. The more people that you know, or better put, the more people that know you, the more opportunities you're gonna have in life. Obviously, these people are gonna need to have a good impression about you, but the first most important part is just to make the contact. Spend a few hours per day growing your network, growing your contacts, making lists, getting email addresses, phone numbers, writing down notes about each person that you reach out and if they respond to you. Use an application to store all your information. Stay in touch with them and reach out to them periodically. The most difficult job of an agent is to get contacts, to keep those contacts, and to keep those contacts updated. So if you're doing that on your own, you're already doing the job of an agent. Overseas basketball has changed in leaps and bounds to what it was when I first started. When I first started, Facebook was just a sliver of what it is today. Take advantage of this new technology. Make a LinkedIn profile, make a Facebook profile, make a Twitter profile, put a professional looking picture, one where you're in a suit or a nice outfit, one that you're playing basketball, use your real name so people can find you on those social media networks. Don't just send a link to a video without any explanation what it is. Don't just send your bio without saying, hello, my name is, I would like to introduce myself and I would like an opportunity to work with your organization. I would like an opportunity to work with your agency. Be specific though. Don't just have a mass email. Be specific to that person using that person's name when you send that email or that message. We'll be making a new article on how to make player bios or basically resumes over here. They're called CVs and also about how to make and get good game film that can help promote you. Where can you find an agent and how do you know if that agent is legit? If you're playing high level collegiate basketball in the US or you're playing with your national team or a professional junior team in your home country, chances are agents are gonna reach out to you directly. Either through Facebook, through a face-to-face -face meeting at one of your games or practices or through one of your coaches or trainers. 
If you haven't played high level college basketball or you're not playing for a professional team or junior team, chances are you're gonna have to do the work yourself to find an agent. The FIBA website is a great resource to find options for FIBA certified agents. You can find that link here. Hoopsagents.com is another website and another resource where you can find agents that represent players and coaches. Eurobasket.com is another great resource for overseas basketball. You can find agents on there just by following player sign. When players are signed and they make announcement on Eurobasket, they make a notice of the agency or the agent that signed them to the team. Another option is to reach out to your former teammates your coaches, former coaches, trainers, if you have a trainer, and ask them who they use or who they can recommend as far as an agent or agency goes. Find out who they've been working with or who they've worked with in the past and get a good recommendation from them. Lastly, and probably the most important, is find an agent that represents players with your level or with your experience, I should say. So if you're a player coming from an NCAA Division I university, your NBA level, you've got NBA level teammates, then you should be probably working with an NBA agent. But if you're coming from a small university or playing for a semi-pro team in your, in your home country, don't reach out to LeBron James's agent and say, hey, I'm looking for an agent. Chances are they're not gonna represent you or be interested in working for you. Find an agent that has experience working with players with your experience level. And if you've never played overseas before, then try and find an agent that helps players get their first jobs overseas. Europro Basket has contacts with hundreds of agents, literally. In my phone, I have hundreds of agents from all over the world. If you need some advice or you need some help, feel free to reach out to us. So how do you know the agent that's working for you or that you would like to work with is legitimate? First, what you should do is do some research online. See if there's any articles about them. Try and find out what players they represent, where those players are going, what kind of experience those players had, and what kind of experience those players had in the teams that they played for. Also, try and find out if all their players are getting signed to teams. If it's the middle of the season and they still have a good amount of guys that aren't on teams, then chances are something's not working right there. Also, look into what they did before they became an agent. If it's just somebody that said, oh, I want to be an agent, or if it's somebody that played overseas before, or played in the NBA, or somebody that's coached overseas, or in the NBA, or college basketball, somebody maybe it was a team manager or a sports director. This type of experience obviously is going to help an agent. When you speak to the agent, ask them what kind of leagues and regions they work in. See what kind of, where they try and grow their market and where most of their contacts are located. Also check out to see how the players are doing in the leagues that they're playing. Go and see how that player is performing in that league and if it was a good situation for that player. Reach out to some of your friends, former teammates or coaches to try and get some references about the agent that you could potentially be working with. Does the agent or the agency have a website? Do they have social media? Are they active on social media promoting their players? If they have a good social media following, it could be a great promotion for you. They post when you have a good game, they post when you won a championship, when you won a trophy. All that information goes on their website and on their social media and all the coaches and the teams that follow them are going to see you. Also, you can look at what type of certifications, what kind of education and what kind of formal background your agent or potential agent would have. Working with multiple agents, the advantages and disadvantages. You probably heard one of your friends or former teammates say, man, I'm not working with just one agent. I'm working with multiple agents, one in every country that I wanna play in. You've also probably talked with other players or other former teammates that say, I just work with one agent, I sign with them and he represents me. Your friends are probably saying they either work with an American agent or they're working with an agent based abroad. Now you have to be wondering, what is the best option for you? With accurate and correct information, you can make the right decision for you. There are advantages to working with multiple agents. One of those advantages can not being tied down to one agent or one agency. It can give you various options about being offered by different people to different regions or different countries instead of just focusing on one. It'll also give you some more freedom to promote yourself and to reach out to people on your own. If for some reason one agent isn't getting any interest for you, maybe another one is getting some interest. Maybe there's a possibility one of the agents that you're working with isn't able to find any opportunities for you 
but another one is able to find opportunities for you. This will leave your options open for that. Now there's disadvantages as well to working with multiple agents. There's probably more disadvantages than advantages. I'm gonna give you a prime example of how working with multiple agents can actually set you back or can take away opportunities. So say you're working with agent A and you're also talking with agent B. Say you've been working with agent A for three months and that agent, maybe you don't know it, but he's been offering you to multiple teams, talking with teams, trying to negotiate opportunities for you. And then agent B who comes to you within just the last few days or a week says, hey, I got an opportunity for you. And you sign a contract with that agent B. Then agent A, all the work and all the effort he put in or she put in is just thrown away and down the drain. So you created a bad relationship with that agent A and chances are that agent A is probably not gonna wanna work for you ever again. Another example is that say you're working with agent A for a long period of time. That agent is offering you to different teams in different areas. Then agent B also wants to work for you. They're offering you to the same opportunities in the same region or the same teams. Now both the agents make the offer to one team for you. That one team is interested, but they don't know which agent you're working with. So now it makes it complicated for the team because both agents are gonna want their commission and their fee for placing you with that team. So that team might just say, forget it. I'm not gonna get into this dispute between two agents. I'll just go with another player that only has one agent. Another disadvantage of working with multiple agents is that those agents that are going to be working for you they're not going to put all their time and effort into you they put their time and effort into the players that are signed for them so maybe one agent has 10 15 players they're going to put all their time and effort into those 10 15 players to make sure they get opportunities because they feel that those players are the most marketable the other players that they're just talking to they're not signed with their agency maybe they spend a little bit of time but they're not really focused on them so you're going to get overlooked for certain opportunities your profile is gonna be at the bottom of their pile. How are agents paid or reimbursed for their services? Really pay attention to the end of this section because this is where most players get scammed. NBA teams, WNBA teams, and many overseas teams in the top division make the players pay the agents out of their own salaries. So that means players are paying out of their contract out of their salary the agents fees most of the other leagues and most of the other teams overseas pay the agents apart from the player's salary so they pay the player's salary and then on top they add an extra 10 percent for the agent but that goes directly to the agent and the payment to you goes directly to you these payments to the agent can be paid either monthly uh, yearly in a one-time fee or they can split it up into multiple fees it just depends on how the agent makes the agreement with the team and it should all be outlined in the contract that you sign between you the team and the agent one thing is clear though you do not have to pay the agent up front you don't have to pay the agent to get a flight you never have to pay the agent for a visa if you have to pay for a flight for some reason you're covering your own expenses for a flight to get there which happens on occasion you pay directly to the airline agency you don't pay to an agent if you have to pay for a visa then you go to the embassy and you pay directly to that embassy for your visa you don't pay the agent to get you a visa you have to be the one that gets that visa unless you're in another country and the team is providing you the visa you should never pay for an agent to work for you the only thing you would ever have to pay an agent for is a showcase or an event or something that exposes you to that agent or to that agency what is the process an agent goes through when offering you to a team this is a very important concept for you to understand many players believe that their agent is not working for them or not putting in an effort because they're not getting offers or maybe they feel the communication between them and their agent is not great we would like to clarify the process an agent goes through so that you can make educated decisions about your agent and about your representation there are many different ways your agent gets you offers or opportunities on teams 
They could be contacts through the coaches, through the team's directors, through the team's managers, sports directors, presidents, board members. There's many people that work inside of a overseas basketball organization. Potentially, your agent could also be working with another agent in the region that you're being offered. Whatever the case may be, these are the steps that your agent is typically gonna go through when offering you to a team. Say for example, a team has an opening and they're searching for a specific player. That team is gonna reach out to various agents and ask, hey, do you have a player in this position? Can you send me the options that you have available? That team will inform the agent about the financial offer that they could make or a rough estimate of the financial offer also the other things that are going to be including such as bonuses flights apartments cars these type of things they're also going to inform the agent of what type of player they're going to look for if they're looking for a point guard do they want a scoring point guard or do they want a floor general who's going to run the team and who's going to organize the team at this point your agent is going to reach out to you and say i've been opening in a team this is the offer are you interested you reply back yes no maybe if yes, the agent takes your information, your player bio, your video, and he sends it to the team for analyzing. Once the team receives your information, they're gonna go over it, they're gonna have the coach look at it, possibly the sports director, president, board members, uh, whoever is in charge of making decisions, which a lot of times overseas, there's a lot of people in this process and a lot of people that make decisions on what players they sign or what additions they make to the team. They'll analyze everything and they'll make a decision on whether they want to make you an offer or not. If the team agrees, they're going to make your agent a financial offer and say, this is what we can offer for your player. At that point, if the agent believes it's a good opportunity and it's a decent offer, they might start negotiations to try and get a better offer or try and get better bonuses, try and possibly get a flight for your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your spouse or even your dog. I've known players that have traveled with their dogs before. Once these negotiations are done, both the team, the player and the agent agree, they make a contract. They make an official contract that has your name on it, it has your agent's name on it, and it has the team's name and information on it. Once everybody signs this contract, it's official. This is typically how the process works overseas. There are different ways and, and different methods that players get opportunities on teams or that agents represent players and, and offer them to teams, but this is a, a, a typical scenario. It's important to keep in mind that there could be 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, or even more players offered to one position. So you're fighting with all these other players or you're competing with all these other players for the same spot. You should also be aware that of these hundred players or hundreds of players, each team does not go back to the agent and say, oh, we're not interested in your player. We're not interested in that player. We're not, they usually don't do this. If the agent doesn't receive a, spot, a response in a day, two, three, chances are they're not interested. And chances are your agent is not gonna go back to you and say, oh, the team was not interested in you. They decided to sign somebody else because the team usually doesn't do that either. So if you don't hear back from your agent about an opportunity that he presented to you, chances are the team wasn't interested and they selected another player. In my experience signing all the players that I have, if a team does not get back to me within a day, two, three tops, then they're not interested in my player. And they probably moved on and found another option. American agent or local agent? Which one is best for you? American agents usually work with multiple agents overseas since they don't have the direct contacts a lot of times with clubs or teams. I say a lot of times because sometimes they do. Most big agents and big agencies will work with local agents or regional agents on every continent. As stated earlier in this video, growing and creating more contacts is extremely difficult and time consuming. A lot of times it has to be face-to-face -face relationships. That's why American agents work with agents overseas because they have those face-to-face -face relationships. Whereas if you're working directly with an agent overseas, chances are they have all those interactions with presidents, coaches, team managers, sports directors. They have that personal relationship. They sit down, they have a coffee with that person or they go to dinner with them. They're their friends, they're their colleagues, they're people that they know or work with in the past. 
American agents a lot of times don't have that unless they're working outside or working abroad. A lot of times that also means it's a split commission. That means that your agent, your American agent is going to get 50% and the local agent or the regional agent is going to get the other 50%. What's also important to know is that a lot of American agents make all their contacts on Facebook, Instagram, social media, just like you can. So they don't have the personal relationships with the teams or the coaches or the presidents. They're just reaching out to teams and sending players information to those contacts. They've never met them personally. Whereas if you're working with an overseas agent, one that's living in the country, chances are a lot of them have those personal relationships. So there's usually a stronger bond between an overseas agent and the team that they place you with rather than an American agent and the team that they place you with overseas. Local, regional, overseas agents, a lot of times they're localized in one region or one country, and maybe they don't work in another country. Uh, some of them do. The big agencies and the big agents that are overseas are based overseas in Europe, Asia, Africa, Middle East, South America. These agencies have representatives throughout the world as well. They may have an NBA agent connected with them. They may have other agents in Australia that they're connected with as well. If you're working with a smaller agent or a smaller agency that has a low number of players, they're not very high level, chances are they're probably working within their region. Say for example, you have a European agent or a Spanish agent, chances are that Spanish agent is working inside of Spain mostly and maybe has some, some few contacts outside of Spain, but their main market is probably Spain. Another example is a German agent, it's probably working a lot inside of Germany and most of their contacts, they're, they're focused on developing inside of Germany, but they probably have some other contacts outside of Germany as well. It's important for you to talk to that agent and find out exactly where they place their players or where they have their contacts, where their focus is. I always tell players if you're interested in starting your career in a specific region or you think a region or a country is better for you or more interesting for you or you have a passport in that country or that region, then look for an agent that works in that region. Look for an agent that's based in that region because they will have the contacts that can get you started there. For example, I wanted to play in Japan, so I went out and I got a Japanese agent, and that agent helped me get to Japan. Most of my opportunities in the Middle East, they came from agents in the Middle East. And most of my opportunities in South America came from agents in South America. Again, if you have any questions or concerns about agents or agencies, uh, or you need a recommendation, please feel free to reach out to EuroPro Basket. We'll give you the best advice we can. How can you get an agent to want to represent you? First of all, it should be very clear that an agent is working as an agent for a profit. Their main goal is to make money selling you to a team. It's just like a car salesman sells a car to a client. You're the car, the client is the team. The better the car, the more expensive the car, the easier it's gonna to be to sell to the client and the more money they're gonna make for selling that to the client. If an agent doesn't believe that they can sell you to a team, chances are they're not gonna to wanna to work for you. Most single agents will represent anywhere between 10 and 20 players. A sweet spot is around 15 players. Any more, it's really difficult to manage. Any less, then they're not making enough money to make ends meet. So this is why it's crucial to make yourself as marketable as possible. First, to an agent, and then to a team. That will give you the best chance of having a reputable agent want to work for you and represent you. What do agents look for in players that they want to represent? There's four key things that agents look for in players that they want to represent. The first is the experience. The better the experience, the better the options a player is going to have. Agents are going to look for players in the highest leagues that they possibly can. NCAA Division I, professional leagues, national team experience. These type of things are what agents are gonna look for in their players. The second thing is stats. Agents look for players that have good stats. Depending on which region the player is gonna play, depends on what kind of stats the agents are looking for. Obviously, in Europe, you're not gonna be scoring near as much as you're gonna be in South America or the Middle East as an import player. The important thing in Europe is to have good averages, consistent averages and efficient averages. 
Maybe in South America and Middle East, Asia, you need high scoring averages. But the stats are going to be important because teams, managers, coaches, they're all looking at player stats. Thirdly, they're going to be looking at film. Usually a highlight, maybe a highlight for every season so they can get a basic idea of the player, how they move, how they shoot, how quick and athletic they are. And then they're going to want to see two full game films. And now all this film has to be from this previous season. It can't be from two or three years ago. And fourthly, they're going to look for some type of CV or a resume or a player bio, something either online on the agent's website or something that's made like a PDF or a Word document. This resume or CV is going to have all your personal information, your name, your height, your position, your birth date, all that information. Plus, it's going to have your stats. It's going to have your video links, highlights and full games. If you can get all this stuff together and get the highest quality, then you're going to have the best opportunity at getting the best representation. In future articles and videos, we're going to give you information about how to make the best bios or the best resumes, uh, what kind of film is acceptable, what kind of highlights are acceptable and what you should focus on in your highlights, as well as what kind of stats teams are looking for and from where those stats can be. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos like this regarding overseas basketball and everything there has to do with professional basketball overseas. Stay tuned, follow our YouTube channel. We have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us so you can stay updated on when we make these new videos and these new articles.